Okay, hi there everybody and welcome to this tutorial on how to create a sequenced version of Faded for Unit 7 of the BTEC First Award using no commercial audio at all. Okay, this is a new approach. We haven't done this unit like this before. We're going to sequence completely from scratch. We're not going to introduce any uh, commercial audio like we have before other than what's built into Ableton. We're going to get to some of that later. Um, but we're going to put most of the tracks in completely from scratch. So what I've done here is I've opened up a new Ableton project. I've got exactly the same version uh, here as you are using, which is Intro Live 11. Um, only difference being I'm working on my Mac here so I can make this screencast. Um, I will do my very best as I go through to make sure that I'm saying the PC keys uh, rather than the Mac keys. But just in case I don't, uh, there's the huge Ableton wall display for you to refer to so that you can find your way around, no problem. So when you open up, there's a couple of things that we need to change straight away. Uh, first of all, we're not in arrangement view, and we need to be in arrangement view for the type of sequencing that we're going to do. Session view, which is open uh, in front of us here, is designed for if you were doing a live music set. So I'm going to press tab. I'm going to make sure I'm in the right software. Then I'm going to press tab. There we go. And that's going to take us into arrangement view. And this is where we're going to do nearly all of our work, right? We might use session view when we get into effects a little bit later. But for the moment, we are just going to use arrangement view. Now, we've got four tracks and three buses open currently. And we're not going to need all of those. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this MIDI track. Uh, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go delete and this audio track delete and this audio track I'm going to take out the reverb bus same thing right click on it click delete Right click on the delay one as well. Don't want that and take that out. I'm going to leave the master in um, Not sure you can take it out anyway. Let's just double check. No can't take it out anyway, and you can't take this track out because uh, that would leave us with no tracks, and Ableton doesn't like that. Um, we're actually going to need a MIDI track, so we'll start with this one. And uh, you can colour this one whatever you would like. So we're going to start by doing our piano, and I fancy our piano to be a uh, sort of lime green colour. So there we go, I'm going to colour that up. That means that all the regions that we put onto this track, all the recording areas, are all going to come out that nice sort of lime green colour. Now, what we need to do is we need to tell Ableton which type of instrument we're going to be recording first and I just mentioned that we're going to use the piano to start off with because there's this really nice piano introduction in Faded that if you had lessons with me you learnt how to play um, at some point during year 7, 8 and 9 so this should be uh, pretty familiar to us so I'm going to go over to here to piano and keys pull this down and I'm looking for grandpiano.adg okay that is the uh, grand piano sound that we're going to use so I'm going to drag that I'm going to drop that onto our track and that is now you can see it's come up here rather than just being a plain MIDI track that is a grand piano track now when you have your MIDI keyboard connected that will now mean that you are able to produce sound on your MIDI keyboard but very important ladies and gentlemen this piano intro we're not going to play it in we're going to use sequencing technique the whole point of this unit is to demonstrate to your examiner that you understand how to use a sequencer it's not a performing or recording unit. It's not you being able to demonstrate how well you can play things in on the keyboard. So we need to use a range of different effects. We are going to play in some of the parts. Uh, we're going to play in the vocals a little bit later. That'll be a, a later episode. But we're going to really start off showing really good sequencing technique. I'm going to start by clicking in or drawing in using the uh, the pencil tool. Okay, um, Your assessment brief for this unit talks about how those two things are really important, and they are really important. We've got a little bit of setting up still left to do. So at present, our tempo is set to 120, and our metronome is not on. So I'm going to turn on the metronome, which is these two dots up here, the white dot and the black dot next to each other. And you can hear that now uh, starts ticking when I press space. We don't want 120 beats per minute, which is what it comes on by default. We want 85. So I'm going to double click in there, type 85 and hit enter. And now our metronome is at the right speed for faded. Okay, so let's start creating. So first job, I'm going to right click in the track. Oh, sorry, need to select a, a certain amount. Let's go four bars. Okay, I'm going to select four bars. All I did there was uh, click and hold down and uh, move myself along four bars worth I'm going to right click and I'm going to 
go where's it gone empty insert empty midi clips okay so there we go and you can see it's come up with a nice uh, green header in there and straight away it's opened the editor now this is where we're going to be clicking in um, all of our things that we need to do. So the editor has loads and loads of complicated looking things on it, but actually it's quite simple to use once you get the hang of it. So let me talk you through. This here with the uh, the white and the black should look quite familiar to you. That is a piano keyboard and we can use that to click in notes. Okay, So if I want a G, I put next to a G and I click in, that goes in there. If I click again, it disappears. Now, to enable that, I turned on the, the drawing tool up here, uh, or draw mode. Um, it's called uh, the pencil tool in things like Logic Pro, but we're using Ableton, so click on there, and then you can, you can uh, click away to your heart's content and put notes in. Now, your MIDI keyboard that you've got connected, you can use to help you find the right notes that you want. So, uh, let me find the right place on the keyboard. Where am I? Too high or too low, apparently. There we go. So when I'm pressing notes on my keyboard, you can see that they are flashing up red. And that's really useful to help you find your way around the grid. So the first bit that we need to program is that famous intro that I was talking about this bit. My volume is quite low, I've just realised. There we go. Okay, so that's the first bit that we're going to uh, click in. And um, you have learnt this previously. Right, you have learnt this previously. Uh, there it is. That should be familiar to you. If you had lessons with me in Keystage 3, then uh, we learned how to play Faded. And I'm using exactly the same version. Um, it's a little bit simplified, but it's absolutely fine for our purposes. We're using the same version uh, to create this track. So uh, your teacher should have um, these resource sheets available to you so you can refer to them and you can know exactly what's going on. Or you can just follow through the video and I'm pretty much going to show you click for click. So it starts on an F, right? And it starts on this particular F. Sorry, I'm working uh, double-handed here. Starts on... Uh, F3, I believe that is. Yeah, F3. Okay, so you need to find F3 on the side there. Okay, we're going to enable the draw tool. And we're going to put one of them in here. Okay, now by default, it comes up as a 16th note. You would be able to fit four of them into one beat. And that is much too short. Listen. Okay, way too short. So I need to make it a little bit longer. So before I click anything else, I'm going to click on the times two button to make it double length and times two again to make it double length again. There are three of those Fs before we change to something else. So again, I'm going to click three of them in. All right, and there's our first three notes. If I play it back. Okay, uh, then it changes to an A. So if I press A on my keyboard, you can see that the grid lights up here. So I'm going to click into there. It's too short again, so I'm going to go times two. There's only one of those before we get three Ds. Okay, so again, pressing my D on the keyboard to help me find my way. You can uh, click into here. There are three of those. Go double. Double again. Double again. Then it drops down to a C, which is here double like that. So now we've got okay, uh, which is absolutely right. Then four A's. So just find A on the grid. There it is. So I'm going to click in, go double. Click in, or I should say double, double. Double, double. Double, double. And then E's. There are three of those, so I'm going to go down here on the grid. Doubling up all the time, nice and precise. And then it finishes on a D, so clicking in there. Let's just check those notes. Okay, so... There we go. There's our, our piano melody uh, sorted out straight away. Our first bit of clicking in is done. Now, in order to access even a merit in this unit, you need to consistently show attention to detail. 
right? Now, you've started doing that, right, by making sure that all of your notes are in the right place and that kind of thing, but we're always looking for opportunities to ramp that up. And to get a distinction, you need to demonstrate musicality. So you need to be thinking about the quality of what you're producing. Now, if you listen to this again, it sounds a bit robotic. Okay, and the reason it sounds a bit robotic is because it's computer generated and all of the notes have the same velocity, right? Velocity is how hard the note was pressed on the piano, okay? And the velocity is down here at the bottom of the screen. Excuse my dock popping up. And it by default, it puts everything in at 100, right? Velocity is on a scale from 1 to 127, with 127 being hitting the key as hard as you can and 1 being barely touching the key. You won't really be able to hear anything. Okay, now a real pianist wouldn't play all of those notes with identical velocity. So the first thing we're going to do is going to make some really small adjustments to the velocities. Now you don't have to copy me uh, exactly here with my values. In fact, I'm not going to call out my values. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just reduce very tiny bits some of these. Okay, now. We tend to play stronger on the first beat of the bar. So every four notes, I'm going to leave it at 100. So I'm going to leave this one at 100. I'm going to leave this one at 100. I'm going to leave this one at 100. But the others, okay, I'm just going to adjust around a little bit. You might want to go up in a few cases. Um, it's in, entirely up to you, okay? Uh, and again, bit a bit of trial and error. You might not like it the first time around. But it's immediately going to make it sound less robotic and therefore more musical. And so um, it's going to help you gain more uh, more credit when you're being assessed. Let's listen to this again. Okay, now I didn't do crazy adjustments. I didn't take it down to like three, right? I hovered, what did I stay around? 92. So I was sort of stuck in the 90s. Right, so between 100 and 19, it just made it sound a little bit more natural. We're going to do that a lot, um, so that all the time we are trying to gain ourselves a distinction. So at this point, what do we need to do? Move on to the next thing. No, 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 no. Okay, really important um, with all of this that we are uh, writing up as we go along. So you will have a Google Slides presentation shared with you. Okay, um, I've... Presentation software frequently oh, mentioned excuse me, my Google's just Microsoft kicking in there. PowerPoint, hey, Google. And Google. Stop. Don't know why he's... Listening. What's up? Go away. I looked for that, but it either isn't available hey, Google. or can't be played Shut right up. Now. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, my Google getting involved there. Um, so you should have a presentation shared with you. Um, on slides and I've given myself a, a, a title page here um, you can do that too I would encourage you to do that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot or a screen grab um, using the keys that you would need to it's uh, Windows print screen for you guys on the PC I'm going to take the entire screen And I'm going to put that screenshot. I've got two because um, I have two monitors here. I'm going to go layout blank and just pop that screenshot in here. And I'm literally going to write up what I have just done on a separate slide. So this one can have a title. I'm going to call this screenshot one. And talk about everything that you did first thing I did was set the project up. To do this, I deleted some tracks that we won't be using. Oh no! To do this, I first of all put it in arrangement mode by pressing tab. Okay, Show your examiner that you understand um, exactly how it works. I then deleted some of the tracks we won't be using and set the tempo of the project to 85 to match my song, which is faded. Okay, there we go. We're all set, we're all ready. What did I do then? Next, I needed to record the piano intro. I did this 
using the draw tool. I'm going to put brackets clicking in. I created a MIDI MIDI region on a MIDI Grand Piano track and then I clicked the notes into the right places for this intro. I used the times two button to set the notes to the right duration. Now duration is a technical term which is mentioned in your assignment brief. Duration is the proper term for the length of the notes. Um, I also changed the velocities which is how hard the key was pressed to make it sound less robotic and more musical. Okay, so straight away I'm talking about music, so you know, which is mentioned in the distinction criterion, so we're looking pretty good. Is there anything there that I've done that I haven't mentioned so far? No, I don't think so. Although I could say if I had made any mistakes with the notes, I could simply drag them to change their pitch. In fact, can you drag them? Let me just double check that. I think you can. Yes, you can. You could drag them up and down if you get any of them wrong. As well as the duration and velocity. The software had automatically put them on the right place on the beat. Okay, there we go. So there is big chunk of work already completed, and that's really nice high level write up for faded. Just one thing at this point, just going to save my work. There we go, fantastic. So next up, we're going to put in the Alberti bass section, the bit that comes underneath this. It sounds like this. Okay, that bit in there. So again, we're going to click it in, and we're going to click it in on the same track, and we're going to follow the same approach, except here the notes move twice as fast. So if I pull down the Alberti bass again, uh, sorry, pull down the uh, the instruction sheet again, there it is. There's the Alberti bass line. Okay, now I'll say at this point, if you can play the Alberti bass line, and you want to just play this in with recording, you can but you need to be prepared that that's not what I'm doing in the tutorial. So if you do that, you'll need to work out how to quantize and that kind of thing on your own, because that's not the way that I'm doing it um, in this model. So the notes that we need, we start D, A, F, A, D, A, F, A. Those are the notes that we need in bass clef. D, A, F, A, D, A, F, A. So again, if I hold those on the keyboard, you can see that they are illuminating uh, red for me. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. There's the, the D that we need down there. Put the draw tool back on. I'm going to click one in. Now last time, why is that not? Because it didn't take. Click on the draw tool. Click it in. Now last time we clicked on the times two button twice. This time we're just going to do it once. Okay, there we go. Same business. Okay, where's the F? There it is. So D A F A, we said. Like that. There we go. Uh, let's play that and see what happens. That didn't start very beginning. I think that's right. There we go. Okay, that is right. I've got my right notes in there. Now I could do exactly the same thing again. In fact, for the first one I'm going to. So I'll just go D, double up, A, double up, F, double up, A double up. There we go. So there's the Alberti bass starting to appear already. Now I could find my uh, my next spot and just click it in again or I could take this as an opportunity to show another technique. So I'm going to take off the draw tool. Right. I'm actually going to copy that right using um, the copy which for you will be control C. 
Okay, I'm gonna put my, my playhead here and I'm gonna paste it in. So I've made it a duplicate, all right? But we don't want that chord here. Here we want B flat, D, and F. Okay, so illuminating there. So it's the same pattern, which is bottom, top, middle, top. I'm just going to change them, drag it down. It says A sharp, but that's the same note as B flat. Uh, what did I say top note was? An F. There we go. You can see down the side it's actually helping me out with where all of these should be. The labels are really clear on Ableton, much better than on GarageBand. Okay, so just pull them down to the right notes. B flat, A sharp, D and F. There we go. Um, and that should now okay now I've realized I could have actually saved myself a bit of a job here so I'm gonna take that out uh, I'm gonna do my velocity trick um, before I get started with this I'm, again I'm just adjusting a little bit I'm not doing massive great changes I'm just making it a little bit more musical adjusting some velocities and again we don't want it we don't want it too oops adjusting the wrong one there we don't want it too precise or sorry too robotic that's what we're trying to avoid okay now of course when i copy and paste this now let's just double check that sounds okay Ah, I didn't like this one. Yeah, that one's too high. Let's take that one down a smidge. That's better. So now when I copy these, which I do by dragging, clicking, and going there. Okay, just going to put them all down in the right place. They haven't quite worked out. Okay, now the uh, velocity has also copied across. Okay, and it's sounding way, way, way more musical um, already. So let's do the same thing for the third bar. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste. Now this time, which chord is it? It's an F major chord. chord. Oh, sorry, that's too low. Okay, so they're the notes that we want. Now what happens if we just move them all up together? Probably going to end up with some wrong notes, but we can fix that. Oh, no, that's fine. Okay, so the, the gaps are exactly the same. What's that doing up there? Did I put that there? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's the last note of the of the previous section. Um, fantastic. So that's worked out quite nicely. And then I'm going to take another copy. I'm going to paste it in. And uh, the final chord that we need is a C major chord. So what happens if I drag that down to C? That gives you the right pattern as well. That's that's helpful, isn't it? Okay. Uh, now I'm going to go back to my write-up. Take a screenshot. Right. And I've already decided that I've said something I don't like. Okay. So um, I'm going to take this out because I'm now talking about adjusting the pitch anyway so I didn't I didn't need this bit I didn't need this bit okay so I'm going to duplicate put in my next screenshot this will be screenshot two next I needed to put in the Alberti bass accompaniment. Some nice technical terminology there. To do this, I again use the draw tool, but this time I, I what did I do? I um, drew in the first pattern and then copied it for the following bars um, dragging the pitch up and down as required to get the right notes um, I again 
adjusted the volume no adjusted the velocities of the notes and I did this before I copied so that it sounded more natural and not as computer based okay there we go did I do anything else in that screenshot Did I mention doubling up last time? Yes, I did. That's fine. OK, there we go. So there's our little piano introduction. Sounding really quite good. OK, now there's a whole heap of reverb um, on the original track. Uh, we're going to add that much, much later. Uh, when we get to the effects section. So for the time being, we can move on. And next, we've got some chords to put in. Very similar, um, but different. So we can't just copy and paste what we've done here. So I'm going to select the next four bars up here. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go Insert Empty MIDI Cells. OK. Um, and I'm going to find the right place on the keyboard again. So I'm too low by the looks of it. Sorry, I'm to work too hard. Where's that gone? Oh no, I'm too high. Okay, so I'm going to put the right hand in first, same as we did before. And the right hand changes to chords. So we are here on the chord loop. This is the section that we're going to put in next. Okay, now that is actually that's the same chord pattern as the Alberti bass um, that we've just had. So let's start clicking that in right now. So I'm going to go notes on top of each other this time. Uh, that's the wrong note. Go D, F, and A2. That's it. Okay, now they are much too short. So I'm going to click on double and double again. There we go. And uh, we're going to want those. They take up four boxes now. Uh, we're going to want those four times. So I'm going to copy. Uh, I'm going to paste, he says. There we go. Just clicking along. One of the nice features about Ableton. OK, now again, they sound pretty robo, don't they? So let's make some changes already. Um, generally, the bottom note of a chord will be slightly louder than the top note when it's played on your right hand because you're playing with your thumb on the bottom note. So I'm going to leave, the, leave that one there. Um, and I'm going to adjust the top ones just a smidge. OK, and it just helps it sound a little bit more realistic. Not making them all the same. Okay, I'm we'll trying to make it sound less. And again, I'm not going to any crazy values either. I'm just I'm just making them different. Okay, went really quite low on one of them there. Let's try that. That straight away sounds much much less uh, computer-like, which is what we're aiming for. So now we can copy all of these, uh, paste them into the next bar. Now, if you look back again, what have I done with my uh, sheet? There we go. Um, that's a D minor chord, so we've got D, F, and A. The second chord is a B flat major chord, but the way I've, I've written it out, we only change one note, so we've just got to change that A to a B flat up at the top, which is quite straightforward. So... Actually, we can do it all as one go. So I'm going to select all four of those and move them up. Again, it's displaying A sharp too. I presume because the key is set to uh, something sharp, but it doesn't matter. Let's check that. Okay, now the next one is um, it's an F major chord, and it's back to the first one apart from the bottom note. The bottom note changes down. So I'm going to copy the first set paste them in, and just adjust that bottom note down to a C. OK, and then the last chord is C major. So you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the whole of the first one, and I'm just going to drag them all down one note. <laughs> 
uh, which isn't going to work because that's a different number of semitones. It's going to change the middle note. There we go. So we've got C, E, C2, E2, and G2, and that should give us the right chords. Are these an octave too low? Yes, they're all an octave too low. My fault. They're all uh, two, and they should be in octave three. That's really easy to change. And actually, you know what? Let's write it up and then say I've made the correction. So anything that you've done, say, this wasn't quite right, didn't quite work out, uh, and then we'll fix it from there. So let's take our screenshot. Too many windows open. Take this out, put the screenshot in, screenshot three. Next I needed to uh, put in the chord part of the start of the verse. To do this I found the notes on the keyboard and then clicked in the first chord. I then, no, I adjusted the velocities as before to make it sound more natural. And then I copied and pasted the chord four times. I then pasted again for the second chord, but I changed one note and then filled in the rest in the same way, making sure that I altered the right notes where the chords change. I realized at this point that I had made an error and my notes, no, my chords were too low. So I selected all of them and dragged them up by one octave. There we go, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, so all of these are too low. So I'm just going to drag over. Um, we're looking to go up to A3 for the top note. Okay. And now we're in the right place. Um, okay, we'll put that in our next screenshot. Uh, last bit of... Uh, verse that we need to put in, or this this first little section, this first episode, is we need some left hand long notes um, underneath here. These can be found on here. Okay, we've got the uh, the um, the chord loop section, the left hand part on there. We go D B flat F C again, nice and simple. D B flat F C, and these are much longer notes, so we're going to have to change our durations again. So I'm going to find. The right place. And I'm actually going to put a double octave in. Okay, I'm going to put a pair of D's. Right, so I'm pressing both of those on my keyboard at the same time, and I'm just going to click in, making sure I've got this uh, armed. I'm going to go D2, and I'm going to go D1 as well. Then I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to go double, double. And I'm going to keep doubling up, okay, until they fill the full bar. So they're now the same length as four of those, okay. And I'm not sure if we need to adjust the velocities on here. Maybe why not? Let's let's go. Attention to detail. Let's take them down just a smidge, just a smidge, okay. And yeah, I like that already. Now copy those paste them in. Now they go down to B flat or A sharp. A sharp 1 and A sharp 0. Then put the next ones in. It's back up to Fs I believe. So I'm going to drag them up. Whoops. Make sure they're both selected. Drag them up to Fs. 
And then the last one should be C's. Here we go. <laughs> Check it out. So we've got faded. You know, we've got a great keyboard part. Even though I've never really, apart from to find the odd note, which I didn't need, uh, we've got quite a good little piano part. Without ever really playing a piano. Okay, um, so there we go. What do we do? Take a screenshot. Make sure you're the right thing in front of you. There we go. This will be screenshot four. Once I had corrected the um, incorrect octave, I then added the long uh, left hand notes on the piano part. To do this, I clicked in and then used the double duration key times two until they each filled a full bar. I again adjusted the velocities to make it sound more musical and then I copied and pasted each uh, bass note changing the pitches by dragging and down. There we go. So, to finish this uh, intro and verse section, uh, this is actually all the piano does at the start. Uh, we're going to change to some synths and that kind of thing as we uh, develop the project. We're actually going to need to loop this. Um, so, we've got two sections, haven't we? We've got the, the first intro, which only happens once, and then I'll tell you that these chords here... happen twice okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here I'm going to copy control C uh, click into here and paste so now you've got two times around that chord sequence this is where the uh, the melody will be over the top Okay, really, really uh, nice use of the sequencer here. Worth saying, my editor is huge, and I think that's because I've edited it, I've moved it last time I was using If you need to, you can make this screen bigger or smaller, um, depending on, on what you're working on. If you need more space, probably should have said that um, earlier. Your, most of your work for this section is going to be in the editor. We don't really need to see what's going up in here um, with the tracks so much. So that's it for the first episode. Uh, no, it's not, because I haven't written that up. Um, let's make sure that this is nice and clear up here. Screenshot. So we've got five screenshots just from the intro. Now, you won't need to take as many as you go along. What did I just do there? Deleted the wrong thing, I think. Not sure what I'm doing. Might have clicked on new slide instead of duplicate. Okay, so screenshot. Five is going to be here. Okay, um, the chord base pattern uh, for the start of the verse happens twice. So I copy and pasted what I had just created in order to have 
two loops of the chords. Okay, really quite a, uh, a simple screenshot there. But that's all really good, high-level stuff, showing that you understand how to use the sequencer, but also showing the different ways that you can use the sequencer. You've got loads of different technique in there. And you've got some musicianship in evidence as well. We don't just want a robotic recording. You could say that the uh, sort of all the velocity editing and that kind of thing is optional but you know you're all capable of getting a distinction if you're taking this unit so um, let's uh, try and get that as much as possible so the next thing that we're going to move on to is we're going to start placing the synth in uh, no we're not sorry we're going to start placing in the uh, voice which is a little bit more complicated in terms of melody so we're going to play that one in i'm going to teach you how to play it uh, and then we're going to add that into the sequencer. And eventually we're going to end up with a full scale version of Faded. But for the first episode, that is it. See you in the next episode.